Section 3.1 preview. First, we talk about some description of descriptive statistic and inferential statistic. We will learn to summarize and describe the important characteristics of non-set of data and then what is inferential statistic. In later chapter, we learn to use sample data to make inferences or generalizations about the populations. <clears throat> so the section 3.2 is dealing with measures of the center. First, we want to go over some basic concept of measure, measures of center. the value at the center or middle of data set. Now, these are some of the symbols that we use in the stat. This one, which is for the sum, it's a Greek letter for sum. X is the variable normally we use that for individual values. N represent the number of data samples. N is a part. So the difference between sample and population is you are using the capital N. If you have capital N, means number numbers are subpopulations. If you have small n, means samples. Formulas are always the same, so it make no difference whether it's a sample or population. They all both have the same formula. One of the definition is the mean. Sometimes you call it the average, the measure of the center obtained by adding the value and dividing the total by the number of values. So that's the definition of the mean. And when you go to the example, then you understand how we calculate the mean. What's the advantage of the mean? Advantage is relatively reliable, means of the sample drawn from the same population do not vary as much as other measures of the center. Take every data value into account. This advantage is mean is very sensitive to every data value. One extreme value can affect dramatically is not a resistant measure of the center. Now, when we ask you to calculate the sample mean, this is a sample we use for the sample mean. It has an X and is a bar at the top. So that means sample mean, which is sum of X divided by N. This is a symbol we use for population, which is again, sum of all the variables divided by N. Again, all this definition, when we go to the example, then you do understand it. So this is a sign for sample mean. This is a sign for mean of populations. Now, how do we find the median? There are two types. If the number of data is odd, the median is the number located exactly in the middle. If the number of data is even, the median is fine by computing the means of two middle numbers. And then again, the median, we could use the M. Now, examples. If the number of data are even, how many numbers do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, and at least 12. If the numbers are even, then we cannot find the number exactly in the middle. So in that case, you take the average of these two, okay? So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one, two, three. So these are this set of number and that set of number is exactly these two in the middle. And the median is 0 0.7 to three if it's odd, examples. Let me show you how we do the calculations. Let's say you want to take the average of these two numbers. One, I have $2 and somebody else has $6. What's the average of these two? How many numbers do I have? Two is even, right? The average is a number exactly in the middle. So for that, two plus six divided by two is Four. Four is number exactly in the middle of that. But what if you have three numbers? You have like two, and then you have three, and then you have five, right? 
And what is the number exactly in the middle of this one? Why? Because there, how many numbers do you have? Three. So n is odd, it's three. But here n is two. Okay? So another example, let's say I have this number four, two, seven, eight. How many numbers do I have? Four. How do I find the median? Median is number exactly in the middle. So what you could do, you could write it in order, like two, four, seven, eight. What number is exactly in the middle here? How many numbers do we have? Four, even, right? So number exactly in middle is average of these two. So it would be four, seven divided by two, 11 divided by two or 5.5. That's your median. But if the numbers are odd, let's say I have this number, seven, 10, three, five, and eight. How many numbers? One, two, three, four. N is odd numbers, right? So to find the median, you write it in some kind of order from smallest to the largest. Then the number exactly in the middle is seven. So median is seven. So that's what they're talking about here. If the number is odd, the number uh, the median is the number exactly in the middle. Another thing is the outlier. Outlier can have a dramatic effect of the mean. Outlier can have dramatic effect on the standard deviation. Outlier can have dramatic effect in the scale of this histogram. Now, I have an example here. Let's say you want to purchase a home and you go to one particular neighborhood and on that neighborhood, six homes had been sold recently. One for 380,000, 400, 410, another 300, 290, and there is one for 850,000. See, if you notice here, these numbers are all kind of cl close to 400, but this one is way, way larger than any other number. So in that case, if you take the average, you have to take some of all this, and then divide by six. So when you find the average, it's give you 43,000, right? But if you want to calculate the median, what you do is on this examples, you put all in order from the smallest to the largest. And since the numbers are even, the average of the middle is this. So then you say the median is 390,000. So the one of the reason that the real estate they don't use the average and they use the median is outlier does not impact that much. See, this is an outlier. Why do we call it an outlier? Because it's way, way different with the other numbers, way larger. So if a customer wants to know or buyer wants to know what's the good number within that neighborhood, you don't give them the average, you give them the median. When you have the median, Outlier does not impact that much. So this is outlier, it means a number that way, way larger than anything else. And then, so we talk about mean, median. There are some other uh, terminology that we have in the statistic. One is a mode, and that is just uh, how many times one particular item is occurring. Then mid range, some of these are not very useful and we don't use it very often, but you still need to know. Range is the highest minus the lowest. Like when you want to get a job in a company, you ask them for this particular classification, what's the salary range? So what you're asking is this, what's the minimum and what's the maximum salary that you're offering for that particular position? So you have range is highest minus the lowest. So we do use that one. But mid range, the definition of mid range is you take the highest value and the lowest value and divide it by, by two, which in this case, it should be positive here. So, so we talk about the mid range, the range, the mode, median, and the mean. And then next is a standard deviation. Where do we use the standard deviation? A standard deviation measure the variation among the data, the value. 
Now, a good example to understand the standard deviation is this one I have here. You know, let's say you go to one particular place or one particular bank in bank one, and you want to measure the waiting list for the customer walking into the bank. Customer one, it takes six minutes to be served. Customer two, also six minutes. Customer three, also six minutes. So they all have equal number as far as waiting time. So in that case, if I want to draw the histogram or the bar graph, if this is the frequency, where the vertical is a frequency, for the first one takes six minutes, the second one six minutes, and the third one is six minutes. How would I take the average? Average is you add all these three, which is 18 divided by three is six. So mean is six. A standard deviation would tell you whether your number is way above or below the mean, but here they all are in the same line. So mean has to be, a standard deviation has to be zero because there is not much variation from the mean. Means these numbers all are equal to the mean, no variation. But look at the second bank. On the second bank, one person, the first customer wait four minutes, the second one seven minutes, the third one seven minutes. In that case, there is a variation on waiting time on this frequency, okay? So how do I calculate the mean? Again, you add these three numbers, which is you know, 14 and 18 divided by three, six. It has the same mean, but the frequency are different. So show there is a variation from the mean. I mean, they are not equal to mean. Some of them are greater, like seven. Some of them are lower. So the frequency are not all equal to the mean. There is a variation. So in that case, if you calculate a standard deviation for bank two, a standard deviation for bank one, we said is zero. For bank two, it's like 1.73. Let's look at the third bank. The third bank, this bank is using multiple lines. So the first customer wait one minute, then three minutes, then 14 minutes. So again, the mean, you add all these numbers, you still have 18 divided by three is six. Mean is six, but there is a variation from the mean. See, the variation is very, very large. So in that case, when you calculate the standard deviation for these, the standard deviation is seven. So a standard deviation show variation from the mean. And then I'll show you how we do the calculation for all this. So on these ex three examples, you see the variation from the mean. No variation, there is a variation, very large variations for a standard deviation. We are using different formula. One formula that we use to calculate the standard variation is this one. There is another one, they call it shortcut formula. S is a standard deviation of the sample. Now, the example I have here, it calculate variation for this one. You know this example here for this one, that it was seven. We want to show you how we did the calculation for that. So for that one here, I want to use this formula. X, there are three numbers, one, three, and 14. So these are the frequencies. 1, 3, 14. We want to deal with these three numbers. We understand the mean. We calculate the mean is 6. Why? Because we add this number together, which is um, 18 divided by 3. The mean is 6. What is the variation from the mean? The first one, it goes from 1 to 6. So it's 1 minus 6 is negative 5. The second one goes from 3 to 6. So 3 minus 6 is negative 3. 14 minus six is eight. So X minus mean. Then you have to take these numbers and raise it to power of two. Negative five to power of two is 25. Negative three is nine. Eight is two. When you calculate these, we need some of this number. We need sum of X minus X to power of two. That's what it means. This sum of X minus X going to the score means when you calculate x minus x going to the square, add all these numbers, which is 98. 
put that number here, okay? And then n minus one, we are dealing with one, two, three numbers. So n is three, three minus one. So in that case, a standard deviation is seven. Now, I also want to show you how to use the second formula, which is easier to calculate the standard deviation. In this formula, all I need to do, I don't need to calculate the mean. All I need to do is find sum of all three x's and also take each x raised to power of two and sum. So that would be a shortcut, which we show it here. So you understand with the next example, you understand how to do the calculation for range, variance, and the standard deviation. So in this one, Least below are the top annual salary of TV personalities in millions of dollars. They ask us to find a range, variance, and standard deviations, okay? Definition of the variance is what? Variance is a standard deviations to power of two. That's the definition of the variance. Okay. First, they want us to find range. These numbers are given. Range is the highest minus lowest number. So you find what is the highest, what's the lowest number. You calculate that. That will give you the range. So I show that here. The highest number here is 38. The lowest number is 10. So 38 minus 10 is 28. Range is 28. Now we are using this formula or that formula to find the standard deviation. Now, rather than using the formula, we want to show you how to use the calculator. It's easier to use the calculator to find mean and the standard deviations. I'll show you later. So let's look at this example here. In this example, these numbers are given. First, they ask us to find the mean. Mean is you find sum of all these numbers, sum of x's divided by n. Yeah, there are 10 numbers. So when you add all these numbers, it's 71.3 divided by 10, mean is 7.3. Which number is occurred more frequently? Which number? 7.7 .7 is repeated two times. Is there any other number that repeated two times? No. So the mode, mode is 7.7. .7. Which number is repeated more frequently? Range is the largest minus lowest number. Largest is 10, the lowest is 4.2, so that would be 5.8. How do you calculate the median? Remember, if the number is even, how many numbers do we have? 10 is even. So you go to the middle and then take the average. You take the average of these two exactly in the middle. See, that would be your median. Meet range is sum. Minimum and maximum number you add together divided by two. That's the meet range. So the highest is 10 and the lowest is 4.2. All right, so, and then what we do is we, these are the axes. You list all the axes together. Then you take each of this number, raise it to power of two. This is sum of X2. That's what we need here. We need sum of X2. We also need sum of X. We need sum of X. We put sum of X here. So then that, we calculate the standard deviation and we find that. Okay, now this is another example. Another example is there are 10 students test a score. The same way you could find sum of X, sum of X2 and find all these numbers. Now, I want to show you with these examples, how to use the calculator. <clears throat> On your calculator here, it 
there is a bottom stat. You click on that. Ah, you don't see it. And then first you want to make sure there is no, nothing in clear list. See, when you put a stat, the very first one is edit, right? See, I already have some numbers in L1 and L2 and L3. I don't want those numbers. So I want to clear those numbers, okay? To do that, to clear all the numbers that you already have on your calculator based on the previous calculation, you click a stat and then you go to clear list. Then I tell the calculator second, L1, comma, L2. I tell the calculator that clear all the lists in L1 and L2. See now, you click a stat and you go edit. Nothing in L1 and L2, okay? So I go ahead and L1, I go ahead and put these numbers. 70, another 70. They don't have to be in any order. When you want to use your calculator, they don't have to be in order, even if you want to calculate a million or anything else. So, so far I have 70, 70, 78. 80, then I have another 80, another 80, then I have 90, then 90 again. Then 95, then 95. See, calculator is waiting for number 11, means calculator already input 10 numbers. Do we have 10 numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then you understand that you have input all the information. Now, now I want to do the calculations, right? I want to calculate a standard deviations, or mean, they didn't ask for the, oh yeah, they asked for the mean too. So now, everything is in L1 already. So you go to start again. Now you go to calculation, scroll to the right calculation. The very first one is when you are dealing with one variable. The only variable we are dealing is just X, right? So calculator already by default, you put to that one. So you just enter. So it calculator is telling you that all the information that you want to use is in L1. Correct, it is. So you go to calculations, okay? Now, what you have is this. Sample mean is 82.8. That's the mean. 82.8 is the mean, which is X bar. Then a standard deviation is 9.28. That S, a standard deviation of the sum. This is the one that we always use, S. S is 9.28. That is your standard deviation. So in that case, you don't have to go through all this formula. You could just use your calculator and do, do the calculation and find the standard deviations and the mean. So again, first you go to start. By default, you are on number one edit, you enter. You put all the numbers in L1. When you finish, input all the numbers in L1, then you go to stat again. Then you go to calculations. The very first one, by default, the calculator understand you have just one column you want to use, one variable of X. So again, enter. So you understand all numbers is in L1. Let's say you have set of numbers in L2, you want to calculate, all you need to do is change that to L2. I have all my numbers in L1, so go ahead and calculate that for me. And then you enter. 
that would give you, it even give you some of this. Let's say you need to put the numbers in, in the formula. You need sum of X, right? You see how sum of X, you have 828, you have it in the formula. You could get it from here. You know how you need sum of X2? Sum of X2 is already there. All right, so calculus will give you a better numbers. All right, so, and then you have mean. There is another form of frequency table that you need to calculate the mean. If you have a frequency table, then the mean is from this formula. Now I'll show you when we look at the example. All right, let's look at this problem. These problems, I use two different methods to do it. There are eight numbers. 120, 130, 120, 120, 140, 160, 200. There are eight numbers, okay? First, I want to calculate the mean. Mean is you add all the numbers, sum of X, and divide by eight. Then you go ahead and use the formula. This is a formula for a standard deviation, or you just go ahead and input all these numbers in L1 the way I show you in the previous example and calculate that. Now, you could also do this problem by using frequency table. Frequency table is this. The first column is X, 120. How many 120 do you have in these problems? One, two, three. So frequency is three. How many 130? Just one. How many 140? One. How many 160? One. How many 200? Two. This is frequency table. Means instead of listing all the numbers in one column, you create two column. One is X and the other one is frequency. Means how many times a number is repeated. Formula need F times X and F times X2, the formula need these two numbers. So F times X is you take these numbers and multiply by that. F times X2 means you take this 360, which is FX and times X. See, X times FX is FX2. So in order to find these numbers, you have to take this 120 and multiply by 360 to get that. That is fx2. So this number, which is fx times x, it gives you fx2. Then at the end, you need to add all this f of x2 and f of x. When you do that, you take those numbers and plug in this formula. Now, what is n value here? n is 8. How many? 8 is sum of the frequency. Three, four, five, six, eight. N is eight. You see how you have eight numbers here? So N in the, in the frequency formula for standard deviation, N is sum of frequency. You take all the numbers into this formula to find a standard deviation. So frequency table has his own formula to calculate mean and the standard deviations. Again, for these problems, there are two ways to do it. One is just you list all the X's and use this formula, or you create frequency table and find your mean and the standard deviation. Mean is sum of FX, means sum of these numbers divided by sum of F. In these problems, these two columns are already given. So we are saying that between 40 and 44, there are two no numbers. There are two numbers. You don't know what those numbers are, right? But these two columns are given. These numbers are given. That we are telling you that the low temperature between 40 and 44, we find two temperature that fall between these two. We find seven temperature that fall between these two numbers, 12 between those. So these numbers are given. Now, if you want to use your calculator, what you could do 
you could put all these numbers under L1 and these numbers under L2. How do I find the X here? X is number exactly in middle of these two. Like what number is between 40 and 44? What is the middle number between 40 and 44, 42? What number is exactly between 45 and 49, 47, 50 or 50, 52? So X is the number exactly in the middle. That's what the X is. So on your calculator, under L1, you input these numbers. Under L2, you input these numbers. Then I need to find F times X, mean I need to take these numbers and multiply by that. On your calculator, go to L3 and take L1 and multiply by L2. Now you need Fx2, means you need to take L2 and L3 and multiply to find L4 on your calculator. So on the new column, you put L4 and you find all these numbers. You could find the sum and then plug into this formula to find your standard deviations. All right, so now I want to show you All right, so now I want to show you how we use a calculator for this. Look, I already emptied my L1 and L2. So I want to put these numbers under L1, my F. So it would be 2, 7, 12, 4, 1. Now I want to put all this number, which is X, under L2. So I go to L2 and I put 42. 47, 52, 57, 62, okay? So I have L1 and L2, each has one, two, three, four, five numbers on each. Now, L, what is L3? L3 is supposed to take these two numbers and multiply and give me that because it's F times X, right? So L3, to scroll up all the way here, go to L3 here, enter. It bring you here. Now, you want L3 to take these two numbers and calculate. You want L3 to take, to take L1 and, and multiply by L2. You want L3, to take L1 and multiply by L2. So we need we need to take L1 and multiply by L2. Now when you when you input that here, see those numbers appear. 84, 829 are those numbers, right? Now what is L4? L4, L4 is supposed to take these two and multiply. See, X times Fx is Fx2. L4 is supposed to take L3 and multiply by L2. So again, you go up to L4, you enter. You want L4 to take L2 and multiply that 
by L3. You want L2 times L3, enter. See, it has all these numbers here for you. Now, I need for my formula, I need sum of fx2. I need sum of these numbers. I also need sum of fx. You could either do hand calculations or if you want calculate to find sum of L3 and sum of L4. Let's say I want to calculate sum of L3. I want to find these numbers, sum of these numbers. Go to stat. Go to calculations, the very first one variance again. You want all the numbers in L3 to add together. So change that to L3. You know how we calculate the standard deviation using this L3. See, sum of X is 1327. It does it for you. Now, I want to find some of these numbers. They all are in L4, right? So you go start, calc, enter, L4. It calculate sum of X is 68279. So that's how you could use your calculator. And when you find these numbers, then take them and put it in this formula. What is N? N is, remember, N is sum of F. Sum of F is N. Because you have two numbers here, seven number here, 12 number here, four number, 26 is what you put here. And N minus one is 25. So you put everything in this formula to find the standard deviations. And these are some other examples for you to understand. Then we have range rule of thumb. And some of the example, if we ask you to find a standard deviation by just rule of thumb, all you need to do is find the range and divide by four. Range is the maximum minus minimum number. Divide, that's how to find range rule of thumb. Then we have coefficient of variation. This is another formula to show the, how to calculate the variation. The formula is you take the standard deviation divided by mean multiplied by 100. If you have a population, the symbol is different. But remember, whether you have population or standard deviation, it doesn't matter. You could still use any of these two formula to come with the same answer. Because in the problem, you either have a standard deviation or sample, or you have a standard deviation of population. It depends which one it is, you could use the full, they both have the same formula. So if the standard deviation of the sample and the mean of the sample is given in the problems, all you need to do is find the ratio multiplied by 100, that give you coefficient of variations. And these are some examples here that you could see. And then these are some graph, how, what is symmetric, what is blue. You know, um, this is an example, this is exaggerated. A couple want to find the probability of the couple who want to have no gear, one gear, two gear, three gears, 10 or 20. See the variations of probability normally goes up and then drop to the lowest. What's the probability of, a couple want to have 20 girls, right? What's the probability of 10 out of 20 is the girls is the highest? What's the probability of one out of 20 is a girl, very low? What's the probability of two out of 20 is a girl, very low? What's the probability of 17 or 18 out of 20 are the girls, very low? So the probability for this example, if you have number of girls and probability of that happen, probability normally goes up and then drop. It has some kind of bell shape. So there are some numbers that are unusual. It's very unusual that out of 20 children have only four girls or very unusual that out of 20 children, there are 
only 15 16 17 18 19 20 so these are critical area they call it critical zone any number beyond this or lower than these are unusual in the problems when we ask you to find the critical points means we are asking you to find these two points means any number below four or above like 20 17 or 6 15 or 17 is critical numbers see they also show it here see anything beyond this now how do we find these two numbers in the problems if you have the standard deviation and you have the mean mean plus two standard deviation and mean minus two standard deviation normally give you these two numbers so to find these two critical point you take the mean and add it to two standard deviations. If you know the mean and the standard deviation for the problems, when you add these together, that gives you this point. And if you take mean and subtract two standard deviation, that gives you this point. The shape is a scoot to the left or a scoot of the shape could always be a bell shape. In that case, all three of them are equal. It could be scoot to the left or scoot to the right. In that case, the median always fall between these two numbers. Now, there is another rule they call it empirical rule. Empirical rule is this guy has calculated and understand that any time 68% of the data always fall between one standard deviation plus mean and one standard deviation minus mean. And he calculated that 95% of the data always fall between these two. This is empirical rule. 68% always fall between that. So in empirical rule, if you have any number fall between mean plus two standard deviation and mean plus three standard deviation, any number fall here is the critical area is unusual. And 99.7% of data are within three standard deviations. And these are some examples. See, in these examples, they give you the mean and the standard deviation. So you add two standard deviation and three standard deviation. And then based on these two numbers, you say if it's three standard deviation, then 99.7. If it's two standard deviation, it's 95%. The last one is weighted mean. Some problems are dealing with weighted mean, which is this formula. In this example, weighted average also come up with calculation. Let's say, you have taken five classes, I mean, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four classes, and these classes, these are the credit, these are the grade. You want to know what is the GPA. How do we calculate the GPA? That's the formula. You take the credit multiplied by the weight of that, like A is four, B is three, C is two, and D is one. So that's how to find the GPA. How do they calculate the GPA? That's the way to do it. Like these are two different examples. Like this is students. He uh, math normally math is four credit, three credit, four, and yoga is one. He got A and this one, D on that, C on that, and B on that. Okay, B has three level, C has two, D is one, four. So that's how to calculate the GPA for this student based on the what grade they receive for each class, that's how we do the calculations. So remember A has four, the value of A is four, value of B is three, C is two, and D is one. And this is another examples. So here you see that the score if you get an A, you, your factor is four. If you get a B is three, C is two, D is one, and F is zero. Okay, all right, that's the end of this.
section. 